Hi, this is Jennifer Gonzalez for Cult of Pedagogy. I'm going to show you how to use a fantastic online bookmarking tool called Digo. This is part one of a three-part series on Digo. In this part, I'm going to show you how to organize your research with Digo. To get started, you'll need a free Digo account. Just go to digo.com, click right here, and follow the steps. I created a dummy account for this demonstration, so I'm going to sign in. When you first log in, Digo is going to tell you that you haven't stored anything yet. Then they'll offer to install an extension in your browser. I already have mine installed up here. This is something Digo adds to your browser to allow you to bookmark your sites. They've got different tools for different browsers. I'm using Chrome, so that's what you'll see today. But if you go into the Tools section right here, you'll see all the other, other available um, options. So right now I have an empty library. How do I start adding items to it? Suppose I'm researching the naked mole rat. After looking around online, I first find this article. So to bookmark it, I go up and click my Digo icon, and click Save, and I'm going to enter a description. I'm going to add a couple of tags, and I'll get to those later. Um, I've already got written here naked mole rats. So I'm going to add that and animals, and that's enough for that. And I'll click Save. Now when I go into my library, the article is there. First I can um, expand my view and there's the uh, description that I entered. And then if I click on it, I'll be taken right to the article. Then I find this other one from Scientific American. So I would like to also save that. Now there are certain parts of this article that I'd like to remember. So I'm going to use the highlighting tool to highlight these. Click on that. I'm going to select the color. I'll just pick yellow the tool and highlight this passage right here. I'd also like to add a note, so I'm going to add a sticky note. Add my comment, save it. Now, when I go to my library, the article is now in the library and there's a two by this arrow. If I click on that, my sticky note is copied into this, you know, right here I've got my description, I've got my sticky note, and this is the passage that I actually um, highlighted. It's here, it even keeps the links. So that's all maintained. Now if I go to the article, when I first go to it I don't see any of that stuff, but if I click up here and click on annotate, that brings up my highlight and my sticky note. Now I may also want to collect images. I find this adorable one and can't live without it. So to save this one in my library, all I have to do is right click it. And because I uh, loaded on that Digo extension, I've got this now in my right click menu. I can click save image to Digo. And let's go ahead and tag it. And I'm going to add another tag and animals. Okay. Take a look at the library. I'm going to reload it again. Now my picture is there along with the other two articles. After items have been added to my library, I may want to take more notes on them. I can always go back in and add more details to the description. If at any time you're looking at items in your library and you don't see information, it could be that your view has been collapsed. So there we go. We've got the expanded view now which has all of my descriptions and everything, but to look at it a little more simply, you just close it up and there you have it. Now, right now, this is a pretty manageable library, but suppose I collect a lot of items. Let's take a look at a library that's a lot more full than this one. Okay, this is the other library that I set up. The default view shows item by the date that you added them. The more you add, the less effective this default view is gonna be. But Digo offers a couple of other ways to organize your items. One way is with tags. For every item you collect and assign tags to, you can look at your library by filtering it only for those tags. So if I just click on public speaking, I will only get the articles that I tagged that way. Another way to organize your items is with lists. I can create lists on as many topics as I like and store items within my lists. The items I collect will still appear in this main library, but if I click on one of my lists, only the items in that list will appear. So let's take a look at my Shakespeare list. Now within a list you can add headings so that you can keep your items organized. You can arrange the items any way that you want to. So for example if I wanted to move this up here I can do that. 
Now right now I've got a heading for Othello and I've put all of my Othello items there and then I've got another section that's just Taming of the Shrew items. But I've just started collecting Macbeth stuff too. I've got this right here and I don't have a heading for that so I'll show you how to create that. I just click on Add Section and now I can move that item. I can move it this way or I can just click top and it'll go all the way up there above the Macbeth and I just have to slide it down one. So how do these items actually get into the lists? To add an item to a list from the main library, and let's go back there, I've got one right here called Themes in Macbeth. All I do is check the item, then a window up here comes up Add to List. So I click on that, click on Shakespeare, and it's there now, of course it's down at the bottom, so I'll put it right here in the Macbeth list. I can also add an item to a list as soon as I find it online. So suppose I want to attach the Spark Notes to Macbeth. Right here, when I'm saving it, this window comes up that you've seen a number of times. This part we didn't pay attention to though. It says Add to a List. I can actually assign it to a list right when I'm saving it from the website itself. Now when I go to my library, it's there, but if I click on Shakespeare, it's there too. I can move that into Macbeth. To create a new list, you just click on this button right here, Add List. Let's say I want to create a private list. Now that's in my list, but it's also got a little lock on it, so that means that no one else can see it. So that's how Deagle can help you organize anything you research online. In part two, I'll show you how to do online collaboration using Deagle Groups, and in part three, I'll show you some of the special features Deagle offers just to K-12 and higher ed teachers. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.